Good afternoon, Sister Rita Bergamini. I'm Molly Swain, and I'm delighted to be here today to be in conversation with you. We're here at Providence Mount St. Vincent in Seattle, Washington. I was asked to share experiences that I had the Sisters of Sacred Heart Providence at that time, and I entered in 1943. There were seven in my class. The novitiate was a two-year program. And I was in the novitiate from 1943 to 1945. The first section of the novitiate was the postulancy. We had a director, Sister Martin, and she had classes introducing us to religious life. And my job was to serve as a professional nurse at Mount St. Vincent because I was a registered nurse before I entered. We had a large dormitory on one of the higher floors, and we were in bed at 9 o'clock and up at 5 a.m., and we had mass at 6 and breakfast at 7. And then we had our classes and chores for the day. We ate our meals in silence, except on days we called congés. Congés were holidays. Postulancy was six months. At the end of the six months, we were called novices. Most of the time was spent on deep study of a Sisters of Providence Constitution. And one afternoon, One of the sisters came in and said, oh, we're going over to Providence to tour the hospital. Do you want to go? I said, I kind of know what goes on in a hospital. I had worked as a nurse, so I didn't go. In the middle of the afternoon, the director of novices called me in, and she said, now, dear, you have been named for Providence Hospital in Portland, Oregon and you will leave at 8 o'clock in the morning. In the morning, there was a sister from the Holy Angels, Canada province, who was coming down and going to Portland. Uh, She was going to St. Vincent's. So we traveled together on the train, and that was my first mission. And when is your birthday, Sister Rita? 7-16-21. I will have my 80th anniversary of a sister of province. Congratulations. What a wonderful life of service and devotion to the work of the sisters. I had several different experiences, first in nursing, then director of nursing at school of nursing and clinical unit for the uh, at Providence Hospital for Seattle University, and then 20 years in the archives. Did you start the archives for the Providence? Yes, I did. I was a provincial secretary in Issaquah. There was no organization as far as the record keeping. I was seven years as a provincial secretary. And then in 72, we moved over to St. Joseph's residence and moved the archives there. And I was lone archivist for about 12 years. I think you were involved in the Greater Seattle archive community. One day, um, we had a meeting of the different archivists, and I said, oh, well, that's a good idea. So I called the archivist at the University of Washington, and we were good friends. We had our first meeting of the Seattle area archivist in our small dining room. That first meeting was at St. Joseph residence? Yes, it was. You really were instrumental in getting that started. Yeah. And it's wonderful to see how much they've advanced it. Do you remember what called you initially to become a Sister of Providence? I was talking to one of the chaplains at Providence Hospital in Oakland. Somehow we were talking about vocations. He said, uh, Rita, do you want to do what you want to do or what God wants you to do? And I said, oh, well, if that's what God wants me to do, that's fine. So you went away and did your nursing career in other markets. You went to Portland oh, but and you worked I, I was at- only at the Mount when I was in the novitiate. Mm -hmm. But then later in life, after you were essentially retired, when did you come back to the mound? That was in 72. And so you've lived on this campus for 50 years? So you had an apartment at St. Joseph residence? I retired, I think, about in the 90s. I understood there was an orchard. Yeah, an orchard, yeah, right. And the sisters used to do canning and and make preserves to sell. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that. The sisters would get wonderful fresh fruit from Yakima, bring it over, and we'd sit there and can the jars. And thinking about all of the wonderful work that's been done here over the years, 
I think about, you know, the mountain wouldn't exist if it hadn't been for the vision of the sisters back in the day to build a home for the very frail elders. So we're very grateful to the sisters for that vision and fortitude to build such a wonderful place. Do you feel it's important for the mount to continue? I would think so, because there certainly is a need for care. And if we're able to do that, I think that would be a wonderful contribution. I don't see any reason why we shouldn't. A lot of people don't recognize the need until it touches their own family. And then they realize how important this work is, that people have a place to go, even when they've outlived all financial resources. 60% of the people here who need nursing care have run out of money completely. And it's because of our mission and a lot of philanthropic support that we're able to continue. That's a large number. Mm -hmm. I I knew we had some, and I think we had one that we were taking care of, weren't we? Yes, one person each year is selected. But to manage with that, that's a big job. But imagine if these people had nowhere to go. It'd be nice if you could get more donations. Yeah, there's so many needs. Right. But a lot of people, as I was saying, once they witnessed the important loving and excellent care here, especially the nursing care that's provided, then they understand Yeah, this is so important to continue this ministry. Charlene used to come over periodically and just sort of update us on things that were going on. It's been wonderful having you as our neighbor just across the hallway and always appreciate your visits when you come down the hall with a note or an article or something to encourage us in our work. I really appreciate having known you. And I have your your booklet of poems and prayers that you put together. You know, as I do any spiritual reading, I just jot down a little, and I put them in a little box and I thought, oh, one day I'll just put them together. So thank you so much for all that you do and for being with us today and sharing some of your memories and stories. Well, thank you, Molly, for all you're doing here. 